Open, take one. Okay, hey, before you leave, I, can you see what might be in my finger right there? Are you gonna smack me in the <laughs> face? What kind is of life a, have you had? Do people it, really just let? Is it a splinter? Look, is it a splinter or a shard of glass? Because it. how can the show go on? I'm in I mean, terrible pain. Mean, we might need to take you. I mean, look, I'm in awful, awful pain, and I don't know what it is and what I should do. Rob? Bite it. Bite it. That is a terrible idea. That's what Just I do. Run some water over it. You'll be all right. Okay, thanks. Thanks You're for welcome. that run, running water over it. <laughs> all right, so welcome into another show. Sorry about that. A couple of weeks ago, it was a hangnail. Today, it's whatever this is. Um, but I'm very thankful to be here. Very thankful that you're here. Just thankful in general. And you may be asking yourself, why are they in the Prairie Farms kitchen? Well, we understand Prairie Farms now on a whole new level. Don't we, Lucas? Absolutely. What did we do of late? Yeah, we went to two incredible farms where they produced a lot of the milk that Prairie Farms uses. In Kentucky. In Kentucky. The hills and hollers of Kentucky. Yeah, it was actually really beautiful out there. I don't think I've ever been to that area. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that Bruce Willis had a farm? No. <laughs> and I, I was, was super surprised. A little disappointed it wasn't the other Bruce Willis. What? But then shortly after, I got to know this Bruce Willis. Right. And I was very happy because he's okay. a great guy. Okay. I, I have a Did, question. Yes. Did anybody say yippee Kaye to the Bruce Willis? Did anybody say yippee Kaye? We did not, but you were there, Rob, so why didn't you do it? Because I just now thought of it. Oh, he just, <laughs> he just <laughs> thought of it. Okay, and then we had a, a glorious time at the Compton Family Farm. Yes. Man, look, they can, like, go on vacation now and not even have to worry about the cows because they have robots. I legitimately thought people were still milking. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I you have to. I didn't actually think that there were machines created for that. Right. And which is hilarious because there's machines created for everything that we yes. do now. And, but for me, I was like, no, in the middle of Kentucky, they're still just getting a bucket and getting down there. The bucket. And, yep. I think they've been past the bucket for a while. Oh, yeah. He yeah. even said that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have to prepare the little the teats, and then they, you know, they have this machine that goes up on them, and then they just extract all the milk. But this robot, guys, look, I don't know how long she stands there, right? This cow moseys on up, and they feed her. So that's the, that's the key, right, is they feed mm -hmm. her. And she's standing there, and by this laser, they have to find it. You know how many times that thing had to line up? It's like, oh, wait, oh. It was yeah. awful, but you know what? It seems to be working for them. The other thing we learned when we traveled together, we learned about a lot of, a lot of things about a lot of people, and we took pretty much the whole team. Riley, uh, come, here, come here for a second. Uh, oh, man. Okay, so Riley and I and Zach, we were on the A-team, right? Yeah. So we got up bright and early, and I'm showing you right now my beautiful time lapse of the sunrise. It was early. It was early. Really early, what, five? You were on the five farm, five, though. Five, you five, were yeah. loving it. Zach was flying his drone. Was Life a, was good, right? Good time. Yeah. So then the next day we get home, because this is a guy that's pretending like he's, he's comfortable on the farm, but yet Just a little bit. you were in athletic shorts yep. and tennis shoes. Yep. And what did you have to step in a lot? <laughs> huh? Um, cow manure. Sent him right in. Sent him I, right in. Yeah. I told him. I said, boots, and he didn't do it. Well. Well. You learned, didn't you? I did. And I was, sitting in my, I was sitting in the car the other day. I was like, it smells like, it smells like cow manure. The athletic here. shoes don't have the same. Uh, okay, there's something else that you're about to learn. What did you tell me at breakfast day two? Some, oh, yeah, I don't have to cook eggs. He's never cooked eggs. Huh? That's good, isn't it, Rob? You That's going to be good. Is it going to be good? Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to teach you today. Okay. Are you ready to learn? I guess. Are you excited? Yeah. Okay, it's something that we're going to show throughout the show, right? Riley cracking. Are you going to crack the eggs and, and yeah. make scrambled eggs? Do you want to do fried eggs? Sure, no. Do you want to do boiled eggs? No. What do you want to do, okay. poached? Yeah, what the heck's a poached? <laughs> 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 All right, so we're going to fry up some eggs. We'll be doing that through this show, and hopefully, along with Riley, if you've never made eggs... Your life's about to be changed forever. Yeah. Okay? I hope so. You excited? Yep. All right. We're going to go to break, and when we come back, the crack-off, everybody. 
Dorothy or the tail or and frankly I, I found my life fascinating. Her life just kind of crumbles beneath her when her father before he passes away tells her that he's not her father. Yeah, gone. Okay, so I'm I'm here to serve you now. I'm gonna I'm going to assist. You're serving me. You're gonna make so eggs, you're gonna and I'm, it, right? I'm gonna help you. I'm not doing it. You're you're gonna you're gonna do it. So okay. what's the first step? So we're gonna grab you got your pan. Yeah, we got the pan. Okay, right. you're making scrambled eggs, right? I guess I don't know. You're not gonna probably scramble them in the pan, are you? Well, I don't know how to do it. So do you want to put them in a bowl first? I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how to do this. Okay. So, so here we go. We gotta crack it first. Okay. I guess I don't know how to do it. Honestly, okay. I swear to God. I don't know how to do this. You don't know how to, oh. <laughs> See, look, no yolk in there. No uh, egg in there, honestly. Good job, Riley, honestly. but I'm gonna teach you something. See, this is what people don't realize. So for the longest time, we were taught to do this, right? A hard edge, hard yeah. angle. Actually, right there. Why is that? Because it doesn't squish it in and you have a better chance of no, no shell. Watch you get. Absolutely. Look at her. No, there's no Mine shell, baby. Better. There's no shell. Mine was better. If parents can't make it to the office within that certain time frame, it's good that they know they have options for after hours. We can still evaluate the child via get the background of what's going on, how long they've been sick. Most of the time I found it's a lot of offering them things that they can do at home to, to try first. It is a good option for parents that, you know, if they can't make it to the office, we can still evaluate their child, lay eyes on them, and make sure that they are doing okay at that time. Have you guys tried the brain freeze? Now brain freeze um, sounds disgusting. It sounds right. sour gummy worms. Oh, I love it. It's so good. You guys have to try it. What about mm. dragon's blood? I feel like that would be oh. like a chance. You just missed the tobacco industry's latest scam. Have you guys tried the brain freeze? Because you were supposed to. Sour gummy worms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. It's so good. Do you want some? Sure. And this is an interview we've been waiting for, Julie Newmar. Now, what's interesting about her, a couple of things. Number one, she doesn't do interviews, but she watched the spiel and she granted our own Tim Estilos an interview. What we found out about her since then is in 1970, Julie received two U.S. patents for, any guesses? Don't say it, you already know. I was going to say something weird. What was it? Watermelon. Not watermelon pantyhose and the bra, okay? But what most people know her for... Is her role as Catwoman. Right, she played Catwoman in the first two seasons of Batman. Tim, take it away. Miss Julie Newmar has been watching silently over this entire conversation. And look at her vintage Miss Julie. She is the perfect, the ultimate... Oh, try to describe her and not use the word statuesque. Oh, Miss Julie, you are statuesque, and you were the only Catwoman. Miss Julie Newmar, it is indeed an honor and a sincere pleasure to chat with you today. We're going to talk about your career, your book, but first, again, thank you for joining us. My pleasure, Tim. Now, you've been a performer on Broadway and TV and film for most of your life, so what is it about this time that you felt was the right time to write your memoirs? I'm going to be 90 this August, so I better get on with it. I was thinking, actually, I've been, I, I've been working on it for three, four years. You keep going deeper into the, the story or the tale or, and frankly, I, I found my life fascinating. Quite a wonderful life. Yes, and there's still more. Now, it seems that you've always been interested in performing. You 
at a very early age, you were studying dance and ballet and classical piano. What was it about performing at that early age that you knew you wanted to go in that direction? When I was growing up, we were given music lessons and uh, because we didn't have all that entertainment. Yeah, we had a radio, but people used to entertain each other. No, that's not the right answer. The right answer is my mother. My mother was the Siegfeld Follies girl. And her, she had to shorten her career. And I do believe that had her career continued, I might not have been given all the opportunities of dance and music and that she gave to me. So it was a great gift for my mother. Now, you started out your career as a dancer. In fact, at uh, the age of 20, you were a staff choreographer for, with Universal Studios. What was it like being so involved in the craft at that early age? Dance was my real love, more than acting, more than singing, more than anything. It just, the body knew, I just understood, I, I, I could speak. I, and I had the opportunity of so many kinds of flamenco. I was a flamenco dancer. I, I had done everything. I'd studied ballet with Brejinska in Paris. I, I danced with Margot Fontaine, the great Margot Fontaine in Sleeping Beauty. Uh, so, but being almost six feet tall, I couldn't join a ballet company. But still, ballet infused all the, all, nearly all of the acting parts that I was to do. Now, what was it like for you in those early days of performing as a dancer, uh, first in film, and then ultimately you went to New York City to perform on the Broadway stage? Well, I had a part in Little Abner. I think it lasted all of 90 seconds, but it was kind of spectacular because they didn't give me <laughs> any more time. It was, the part was called Stupefying Jones. What does it do? It's a deadly weapon. Guaranteed to stupefy a human male dead in his tracks. Here, I'll demonstrate. Hey, Itchy McRabbit. Yeah? Come on over here. All right, honey. Five, four, three, two, blast off. Stupefied. Unstupefied. <laughs> And strangely enough, I did the same part on Broadway 42 years later in the same costume. Dance is, that's what made me. So you started out your career in Hollywood, but ultimately you went to New York City and continued your career there. You were even part of the, the very famous actor studio and you were there at the time that Marilyn Monroe was uh, a part of that troupe. What was that like for you making that step to New York City? Well, to be a member of the Actors Studio, that was an honor. But I had already run, won the Tony Award on Broadway. It was my first acting role. And uh, I thought, it's time to learn to this new craft. Many people who are familiar with you from your role on television may not be familiar with the fact that you're actually a Tony Award winning actress. You won this Tony Award for Marriage Go Round on stage. What was that experience to get a Tony Award at that time in your career? A great piece of luck. I was 24 years old. I had not acted before. I was in the great company of Charles Boyer and Claudette Colbert two brilliant, brilliant actors with a fabulous script. As a matter of fact, Marriage Ground, a comedy, it, it played on Broadway for 13 months. It closed to standing room only, only because uh, Charles Boyer had a movie a commitment in, in uh, Europe. And uh, well, I was in great company. Mm -hmm. So I think that had a lot to do with the, the success. 
Before we talk about Catwoman, you had another significant role that I understand actually you consider to be one of your favorites, which was in a television series called My Living Doll. What made that role so important to you? Because you played a robot for one thing, which was very interesting. Well, and the most difficult, I mean, how do you be a robot? <laughs> Dizzy. Now get this through your computers. You are not dizzy. You're a robot, and a robot can't feel dizzy. You can't feel anything. <laughs> You're made of low modulus polyethylene plastics and assorted components, and they can't get dizzy. That computes. All right, now tell me what's the matter with you. I feel dizzy. <laughs> How do you be something mechanical, less than physical, less than human, and still have an audience? want to watch you i mean you you they have to care about you the hardest part i ever did it took me 13 weeks to get an understanding from the inside out when you're not just acting intellectually and moving yourself you know whatever it is like a robot but it was a great challenge a fabulous gift to me to have that up to be the living doll on the living doll Mm -hmm. Everyone knows you as Catwoman, one of the most iconic roles on television. But I understand that that was a role that you almost didn't take, but your brother had something to do with it coming to be. How'd that come to ha happen? My brilliant brother was visiting me. I was living in New York City. He was at Harvard, brought five of his friends. We were about to go out to dinner and I got this call. And they said, can you be here next week? We, we got a show called uh, 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 Batman. Well, when he heard that, he just leapt off the couch and he, <laughs> he virtually pushed me out the door. Of course, there I was. I had to do it. But what, what a wonderful opportunity. My gosh, Catwoman. I know that Batman and Robin will swallow the bait. And when they do, I'll be rid of that dynamic duo once and for all. Others have tried but failed. The Catwoman is not like the others. I'll show you how to clip Batman and Robin's wings. I will prevail. Oh, joy, success, and revenge. All wrapped up into one sweet package. What did you enjoy most about that role? Because you're setting a tone for a role that many, many actresses will follow, but you set the template for it. What was it about that role that made it so special, not only for you, but something that would carry on for years to come. It was probably the perfect part that physically fit me as a dancer and the humor, the silliness, that, that piquant character, that naughtiness, that sushin, that, that better than thou. You know how cats are. You know, I, excuse me, <laughs> It was just a perfect part. Mm -hmm. What have you done with Robin? Oh, is that any way to greet an old friend, Batman? Not even a hello, how are you? Yeah. Teachers and manners, fellas. And anyway, it, it'll go on and many, many, many inversions will be made of it, just like the, the opera Carmen. But I was the lucky one. I was given the first opportunity to create the part of Catwoman. Batman, it's been fun, but all good things must come to an end and the goodest ending I can think of is yours. It's not ended yet. It will soon. It's a pity I can't stay and watch, but you know how I hate the sight of blood. TTFN. And what's that supposed to mean? Part off for now. I'm off to pluck Robin's feathers. It was a marvelous part. And it looked like you had a lot of fun with it because she was she could be humorous at times, and yet there was a chance for you to be very, very sexy in the role, too. Well, of course, with the help of a really great writer and great casting, and, uh, oh, my God, you couldn't go wrong. I mean, how could you fail? 
You're very beautiful, Catwoman. Yes, you're quite right. I am. Your propinquity could make a man forget himself. I don't know what that means, but it sure sounds nice. What do you think was the secret of Batman's success on television? Well, it was the best show of the season. Uh, it had the best producer. It had the best casting. It had, oh, it had wonderful writing. And for any actor, that that's your real dream, is to have great writing. And all you have to do is show up and say the words. We know what you're up to. Is that so? Tell me more. You want to steal Mark Andrews' collection? Well, it just won't work. The place is surrounded by police. Thanks for that information. But that doesn't change my plans one bit. And it was so much fun, and it was original, and they tilted the camera, and they had... Ah, it, was, it was marvelous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy it happened to me. Tisk tisk and another tisk, Batman. Why don't you just admit I'm smarter than you are and let it go at that? Was Catwoman smarter than Batman? Oh, yes. Catwoman was smarter than Batman. Oh, yes. Because she had that whole range of emotions. See, Batman was only the good guy. But Catwoman, mm, she had other ideas about life in, in total. Mm -hmm. Know what I mean? I do. It has been indeed a joy speaking with you. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your, your recollections of a, an amazing career. And we're looking forward to the book coming out very soon. Thank you, Jim. My pleasure. It's been an honor. Thank you. I come from a middle-class family, so I started for the scholarship as a 16-year-old. Okay, so what do you need now? So we're gonna sprue it all up, I guess. Sprue it I, I guess, I don't okay. know. Or we're gonna put it on this one. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna mix it up. That's why I figured. What do, you, what do you want to mix it up? You have a choice. Oh, few choices. Give me a whisk. <gasps> well, do you like salt and pepper? Yeah, give me some of okay. that. Okay, I need some salt and what pepper. Is? The wrapper. Here we go, the all right. <laughs> we're gonna see, yeah, here we go. All right, now we're gonna whisk it up, let's go. Now. Some people put what in the eggs to make them fluffier? Water. A little milk, not water, Rob. We don't, I don't think we have any today. Gordon Ramsay says water. Gordon Ramsay says Gordon. water? Gordon. We're not going to do that. All right, good job. We're joined now by Sarah Leanne Beavis. There's a reason we're going to keep the Leanne in there, and we'll get to that in just a second. <laughs> I love this book, Aurora in the Dark. Absolutely beautiful. Kind of a complex story, and we'll, we'll get to the storyline in just a little bit. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for having me. Surprised that you had time to come out because it says here that you enjoy doing jigsaw puzzles, but only <laughs> doing a thousand plus pieces. Yeah. You're I just like, showing off, right? I like the challenge. Gee, do you start from the outside and go in, or what's yes, the secret? Okay. Yes, I always do the edges first. Okay, very yeah. nice. So, <laughs> Sarah Leanne Beavis, and you said you put your middle name with the very unique spelling, L-I-A-N-E, -E, on this book on purpose. Yes. Why? Because 
there's a very popular author. She's one of my favorites, and her name is Leanne Moriarty, and it's spelled just like that. Right. So I thought, okay, somebody's searching for her. Maybe my name will come up right underneath, and they'll be like, who's Perfect. this? Drop the mic. Look at that. Like, <laughs> see, her book will be right underneath her. I love that. Yeah. So very, very clever, very clever storyline, fairly complex. Talk a little bit about what's inside here. Well, it's it's about a girl named Aurora, mm -hmm. and um, she's kind of a spoiled brat a little bit. <laughs> she has, like, the best life. Uh -huh. um, she's the daughter of a warden right. in a kingdom of um, course, called Astoria. A kingdom. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Astoria, yes. And um, then her life just kind of crumbles beneath her when her father, before he passes away, tells her that he's not her father mm -hmm. and that her father is actually a lowly guard um, that has never been in her life or has mm -hmm. never been around. And um, then she has to go on her way to find him um, mm -hmm. because somebody doesn't like the fact that her father raised her the way that she, he did. Right. So, and you just had all of this up here and you're like, you know what, I got to write the, like a really thick book and put it all down on the pages. Or did it come yes. to you in phases? Well, it... It, yeah, it took years kind of for this story to unfold in my mind. Okay. Um, I had a little bit of inspiration probably back in 2015, I think, and I started finally writing it in what 2020. Was the inspiration? Actually, a movie. It was like the end of a movie, okay. and it was kind of the same scenario where a father, well, a man, his wife had an affair, had a child with this uh, other man. Uh -huh. They both passed away. Okay. And at the end, he was raising this young daughter. And that was the end of the movie. Huh. But I thought, like, that just clicked with me. What did he do? Did he tell her? Right. Like, did he raise her to know that he wasn't her father? And it just intrigued me. <laughs> and you're saying this is going to be the first of how many? Four. Okay. Unless I get crazy and keep going. Because <laughs> it was supposed to just be three. Okay. And then I, as I was writing the third, I was like, oh, man, I'm not going to be able to wrap this up in I love this that. book. It just has expanded so much. Okay. So Aurora eventually comes to light or what happened? Do we keep her in the dark the whole time or what, what happens? Um, she, she does. She okay. comes out of the dark. Um, okay. And, yeah, she, she finds herself um, – and finds out a lot of truth. What are the other titles? Um, the Can next one, um, it's at the end of the book. It, it's uh, The next one is Aurora in Secret. Yes. Okay. And then the third one is Aurora in a Dream. Uh -huh. And the fourth one, I'm not quite sure on. Because... Comes to light. She sees the light. <laughs> Aurora sees the light. What do you Could think about be, that, yeah. Rob? That sounds that's great. Good, that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> you know, what people don't realize is um, journaling or writing like this or being inspired, this can be a real outlet for people. Have you found that, that that's the case for you? Yeah. Writing? Yeah, certainly. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good escape to get out of just the trials of life mm -hmm. and just everyday monotony. And just to have that escape is a lot of fun to me. You know, we appreciate our friend, Kim Romani. She observed you already at a book signing. You did a great job. I guess it was the launch. Is that your first yeah. official um, introduction, if you will? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was well received? Yeah. Yeah. Good. I had a lot of people come and it was great um, to see all the support. Awesome. Well, I love that. And I love that for you. And I want people to support you. So... Can they find you online, and do you have pages established? Because you'll have a bunch of folks that'll want to follow along yeah, the story I'm, there. I'm on Facebook. Okay. Um, my page is Sarah Leanne Beavis, author. Right. Author. Okay. Get it right. Yeah. <laughs> and and to be mistaken for the other Leanne. Yes. You, that's what you want to have yeah. happen. Okay. Sure. Excellent. <laughs> well, is there anything else that you'd like to tell your audience before we... Let you go here. Well, um, they can find the book on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And then I've been doing like a local book tour where yes. I've been going to different businesses in the area. And so... Um, so you're I, not ready to go overseas yet? You said local? Not just yet. Stay not local? yet. Okay. <laughs> you're just going to be local for now. Okay. Um, so I have some events lined up. Nice. So if anybody wants to come out and buy a book from me directly, they can. And I That's can sign better. it. Yes. Because you get to keep all the proceeds then, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks so much. We appreciate you. And you guys go get it. Aurora in the dark. And 
they're not going to be mad at the end, right? Like you give them a no. Oh, okay. I've, uh, okay, you'll have to get the next. You'll have to get the next three too. So just telling you right <laughs> off the bat. Go ahead and buy all of them at once when you have them ready. Yes. of course. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank we appreciate you. you. And we'll be right back. Good boy. You always had Thank that, or did you, so you grow much. into that? I grew up with it mostly, but then I kind of grew into it and figured I could do something. Okay. Yeah. There's no way they're all here. They're all here. Are you kidding me? I'll see you straight, Thank you, Lucas. Great on fish, great on beef. Team good with chips. Hey guys, I'm Michaela Lane, and welcome to my crew bus. Start talking. Okay. Uh -uh. okay. They're experiencing your enthusiasm, your love. What is it that you want to achieve every day? What is that footprint that you're trying to leave? So what are you going to do now? We're out. OK, well, do you want to do a little oil? Or are you afraid? Is it a nonstick pan? Oh, where's our pan at? Look at this. He's freaking out. This is when you get a college kid in the kitchen. There you it, go. It doesn't know, doesn't know what he's doing. Honey, right? you're way past college. You're like no, in mid-20s now, aren't you? Like 24, but college kids are still in the 20s. <laughs> Or in high school, though. Usually or 21, 22, 22 you're 23. 24. 20, I know high, uh, college kids who are 24. 24? You yeah. Do? Are they on that eight-year program? 10? Pro probably. They haven't yeah. graduated yet. Okay. All right. So are we good? We've got fire under there. All right, babe. Hit it. All right. Get it in there. Oh, nice work. What do you need now? Oh, I don't know. Something to stir it? Sure. How about this? Is that good? All right. What are you going to do? It's scrambled eggs, remember? What I like to do is then you go wash this pan because you don't want to put it back in there, right? Or this bowl. Yes. Okay. Good. I don't know what I'm doing. We have all kinds of different providers from doctors, nurse practitioners, pediatricians, mental health, pretty much anything that you need we have available. That we can take care of anybody that needs our help. We just want to help you. We're helping those that otherwise might not receive the care that they need. Well, we can see people that normally wouldn't be able to get to someone. We are here to help you and on your team. Hi, my name is Max Dalton. Um, I sing mostly country music, but this is an unreleased single called Gone. Um, it's a song about loss and change and, and going to war with yourself, so hope you all enjoy it. Yeah, gone Like the wind blowing through these old pines Yeah, and gone like the time that was always on my side and gone Like the plans I had on my mind And now I'm out here on my own Yeah, wishing you would just come back home Miss the sun going down Thousand memories I can't erase. Yeah, the only thing that remains the same is love and leaving and the rain. And they'll run, yeah, they'll run away like that sitting song. And these tears, yeah, I'm staring at eyes and broken me and it's me yeah I'm killing the man I want to be yeah I'm fighting a battle I can't win cause who I am ain't who I've been it's the sun going memories I can't erase and the only thing that remains the same is love and leaving and the rain y'all thank you very good you got that 
really deep, growly. That's yeah. that's a really good voice. You always had <laughs> that, or did so you grow much. into that? I grew up with it mostly, but then I kind of grew into it and figured I could do something with it. Okay. So, yeah. so when and why music? Uh, it saved my life. It really did. Um, had some things go on, you know, four or five months ago, and all I had was this guitar. So it picked me up when I needed it, and now I owe my life to it. Yeah, I think that it, it does that for a lot of people, whether Absolutely. they're playing or not. Music is an escape, isn't it? For sure, 100%. What are you going to do with this career? What do you want to do with it? Um, I, my biggest thing is just impacting people when I'm playing, when I'm out at shows and I see people are there and there's a lot of fun music and happy music and then I come in with the, with the sad stuff. <laughs> um, but I can see somebody in the corner and they're just staring at me because they're, 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 they're going through something. And yeah. I want to touch people with my music, so. So you try to reach them through your writing? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. And you're only going to write and perform sad songs? or? Uh, I do some happy ones, some okay, fun good, ones. But, good. but most of the songs are, are sad songs, and um, kind of like it that way. Okay. <laughs> so where do you want people to go to hear more of your music? Uh, they can follow me on Max Dalton Music uh, on Facebook. Okay. Um, and my TikTok's pretty big, too. They can follow me at Max Dalton with three N's. So with three N's. Three N's. All yeah. right. They're pretty easy to find. Very nice. Well, is there anything else you want to add that I didn't ask you about? No, no. Thank you all for having me. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And we'll be right back. And this is the part that most college-age people despise, is what? Cleaning. I don't the mind dishes. cleaning. But... You don't mind doing the dishes? Okay. Don't mind it. Try. Look at him. He's going to do the dishes first. Perfect. I know. All right, why don't you, oh, uh, hello. oh, he went ahead and hit it with 14 squirts of dishwashing li liquid there. Okay. Uh, that's okay, right? You're good. Yeah. So I love this lady, and every time you come out, your crowns get bigger and bigger. <laughs> Rachel Marks, ah, good to see you. Thank you, thank you for having me so much. I love coming to see you. What were you gonna say about all that? Up oh, there? I don't know. It's it's weird with my short hair, right? It's a little no, bit weird. It looks beautiful. Thank you. It looks beautiful with your hair. Yes. So we we follow your journey as a Mrs. Right. Yeah. You're you're you've got the. The fabulous, what is it, ball and chain, but yes. he's not. He's incredible. He is incredible. Hey, let's give him a little shout yeah. out. Yeah, Sean, Sean, Sean Marks, the, Sean. the chauffeur, the picture taker, the, the tool, dad, yes, makes everything. costume guy, yes. yeah, and mm -hmm. dad to two daughters. Yes, yes. lucky dog. Yes. <laughs> So here's the deal. You, you like the competition. We're going to get I into do. that. Yeah. Um, you did share that this might be the last hurrah. I did. Okay. The Mrs. International pageant, which will be held in Tennessee. Yes, Kingsport, right? Tennessee. Okay. Um, but you're not done, really. I mean, right. we're going to still see you. There's a, there's a lot to do. There and is a lot to You've shared. Do. Why do you do pageants? Um, well, I started, and I've shared this with you before, um, I come from a middle-class family, so I started for the scholarship as a 16-year-old, but um, I will have to say competing as a missus is so much better than a miss. Um, when your life is focused just on you and you're 20 years old and all you can think about is you, 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 it's mm -hmm. completely different. Where my right. life now involves, can we all go to this? Can right. we all do this? Right. Um, what difference is this making? What is this presenting for my kids? Is this something that they're going to learn from? Mm -hmm. So this world is a lot happier. There, it's a lot happier me. <laughs> you know, you talked a moment ago about your short hair. Yeah. And there is a reason that you're, you keep your hair this way and your platform this time is also tied to a very important person that we want to mention and remember yes. once again. Yeah, so um, I cut my hair in the quarantine, um, donated my hair to children with hair loss for um, a cancer warrior named Elizabeth Widener. She's from Effingham. Um, I hadn't even met her. I just found her on social media. I started following her and, you know, the power of social media, oh, sure. you know, and I just felt like I had just connected with her story and what she was doing and how she was bringing childhood cancer to light to try to get treatment and money and research. And 
Um, so I donated my hair for her, and I, I don't know, it just suits me. I've it kept exists. it all this time. Yeah, um, you have to make room for the crown. Yeah, you don't right. Need the hair, just the crown. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I kind of tell everyone. So unfortunately, Elizabeth lost her battle to stage four neuroblastoma in September of 2021, probably right after I saw you last. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the beautiful thing about her is that her spirit and her fight and everything she's tried to accomplish with her own battle gets to still live on through her Absolutely. family, her siblings, yes. um, all of the pageant queens that she got to meet and know. And we all just loved her so much. And so I hope that we can kind of do her well and mm -hmm. serve her purpose too, to kind of continue her legacy for her as well. And that's why you've decided on blood donation yeah. uh, as a platform because you were surprised to learn just how much she needed. Right, so I didn't understand how much she relied on blood products for her treatments, mm -hmm. basically just to keep her alive, um, kind of towards the end of her uh, journey. Um, and you know, cancer touches all of our lives, um, my family as well, so it's, something that I feel a lot of people don't know or understand. They might not think about donating blood, mm -hmm. um, but there's so many ways that you can help. If you can't actually donate blood, you can donate your time. Um, another thing too, if you are an expectant mother, I know this seems like a weird thing, but you can bank and donate your cord yes, blood. So you know, the stem cells, yes. it's such an incredible gift. You Most know, you're certainly. basically helping to save lives, Yes, give all these treatments to these newborns. And so, and, but even stem cells come into play in like Elizabeth's situation or any cancer journey, really. So um, there's so much that blood donation really encompasses, and I think people are just unaware. And so I really just want to focus my year on bringing more people to the drives, getting more volunteers, and just understanding the importance of how desperately we really need it. I love that. And what you're going to yeah. do is you'll keep people updated on your page. I will. We want them to go there, and, and you're actually going to embark on – um, hosting a blood drive. Yeah, you're, you're going to do it all. Yeah, so um, I am a sponsor with the River Radio Group at mm -hmm. a blood drive in Ducoin at the American Legion. And so mm -hmm. I just would encourage everyone to come. If you can't donate, um, please come and help at the nutrition stations. You can help hold a fan for those new first That's timers. Right. But right. um, really, just giving your time and giving your blood so is important. really a gift to everyone so well we know you're going to rock it at the pageant and we're going to see you. why when we come back okay? <laughs> okay so she says she'll teach us the walk and the wave okay oh. and she said i can't wear the crown but i could wear a cape so we're going to see how that goes when we come back Hey, darling, look, I am in heaven with this cape. <laughs> like, can you see me just like picking my kid up at school and stuff? Just, yes. This it's hard fantastic. not to wear it every day in the line. This is fantastic. Okay, look, um, so much goes into an outfit when you're preparing right. for these things. Right. What do you take into consideration aside from? I know. Look, I brought you a little sneak peek of my wardrobe yeah. for wow. the pageant. It's for my gown, to tell you the color, kind of give you a little hint. Okay. Can't give any of my secrets, but okay. mm -hmm. um, I think the secret to finding the perfect wardrobe is you have to stay true to who you are. Yes. And you for really want to, what you say it's for you, it's a for cape. For me, it's a cape. Yes. <laughs> and you really have to accentuate um, what like looks good on your figure. So yes. with my short hair, you know, a lot of times things that are more broad shoulders don't look so great. Like if we can kind of keep it more Tight. together. Yeah. Yes, love yeah. that. So everybody knows that there is a pageant walk and a wave. Okay. Right? Sure. Okay. Do you want to put those down? Yeah. Because that's going to, they're going to make you what, like six, three, yeah, six, Yeah, so four? I'm only like five, four uh -huh. on a good day, but okay. yeah, can you get a shot of those? Oh, yeah. Goodness, so I've already got girl. some tall ones look going at anyway. Look you right there. It's... <laughs> so my, these are five and a half, so that puts me, what my well, math's look, terrible. Look, I've got some nice ones I know. On I saw, saw your heels today, so they're going to be perfect for our little walk okay. now. Okay. I might get tripped up on my cage, a cape. No, I'm that's a, the thing. When you, I think the key to the it. perfect walk okay. is, again, because this is my number one rule, you have to stay true to yourself. Yes. And you have to be comfortable in your own skin. Yes. And it is literally about just owning who you are. Watch out, girl. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, I felt something there. I don't know what that, that was. Yeah, that's over what me. it takes. Okay. That's what it takes. Okay. <laughs> All right. I want to follow your lead. Okay, so, so you're going to follow yeah. my walk. Okay, yeah. so if I were out in gown, you want to have like a little bit of a softer, yes. more beautiful, sensual walk. Yes. Yeah, so you're shoulders shaking your butt. back. Are you shaking your I'm butt? I'm not shaking We're not my shaking butt. our butts. No. Okay, okay. No. All so right. you're going to go shoulders back. Yes. And it's really just about moving in a nice, okay. fluid movement. Okay. <laughs> This feels really oh, good. It feels, yeah. feels great. Did you give us a little pose at the end yes. of the runway? Not really. I wasn't really prepared. The judges saw me. I messed up. Oh, well, you as long as me. you just whoop the cape. You just beat I me. I think you'll be okay. 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 And the wave? So I have a natural wave. I can't help but wave the way I wave to my... You don't do the... What is it? The screw in the light bulb thing? I don't or? do that. I'm really more of a, hey, y'all, how's everybody hey. doing? Hey, good. are you going to church on Sunday? Good. That's really more... That. <laughs> That's I really that. more the pageant way for me. And I think what people fail to realize, and you're going to want to take note of this because my son asks me about this all the time. Okay. When you take photos, many times people think they need to, you know, just a little smile. They think you need to smile where it hurts. Yeah. I mean, I that want to is see the all beauty. the teeth. Yeah. All the all teeth. The teeth. Yes. I love that. Do you hurt a little bit by the end of the evening? Oh, when you're oh by the end of pageant week, it's like yeah. I hit the whole ride home. You're like, I can't smile okay. one more second. Okay. okay. All right. I'm going to let you walk off and do your thing. And um, we're going to keep your mom in our prayers. Thank you. We know that right now um, you're having to, you know, she's your big supporter she too. She is, yeah. So you'll have to support her she and uh, she'll be with you hopefully at the pageant or does Sean the, go? Everyone will be watching on TV. This okay. is a mom and dad go together. Oh, okay. So Sean will be having a week of pageant husband time, yes. which means a lot of golf, probably some maybe kayaking, <laughs> hiking, all of those that. things. So he gets a little free trip I since he's so great. Well, we thank you for coming out. Thank we you wish so you the much best for of luck. Me, girl. But you don't need luck when you have so much skill. Well, I think it really is um, about heart yes. more than it is luck. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Do your thing. My best walk. So good. <laughs> Love that. We'll be right back. The teachers are really good. They're understanding. All of our faculty here um, teach from experience. I love it. It's so hands-on. They want to see us succeed. There's so many options, so many things they can choose from. I wasn't just another like statistic out there. My advisors and my professors have been very helpful. I felt completely at home from the first day. Everyone has been so welcoming and helpful and encouraging. It's made it really easy. So I would for sure recommend John A. All right, come over and try it. See what you think. Well, you gotta wait until you're done with the kitchen. <laughs> His eggs are cold before you. <laughs> well, then we then you just pop them back in the microwave. <laughs> well, I guess you could. Which one do you want? Sound like a typical twenty-four year old. I know. Pop okay. them back in the microwave. All right. Here it is. I mean, it would have been nice to ask if I would like some. You want some? No, I'm good. You I go don't. ahead. You, no. you go ahead. You go ahead. I insist. Proceed. I've already had it. Well, go ahead. Ladies first. Yeah, I'm, you go ahead. I'm being nice. Okay, let's go to break and we'll determine who eats, <laughs> you know, first. As vehicles have evolved, so have our attitudes about safety. Seatbelts were a welcome addition. And fortunately, we found a way to protect our little ones as well. We added airbags and safety glass and a long list of other safety features. But there's still something that doesn't come standard, and that's clean air. Only you can protect your passengers from the toxic chemicals in secondhand smoke. So thank you for keeping others safe by choosing not to smoke in your car. We are back in our Prairie Farms kitchen, and I wish you could smell just how wonderful what we see here. I mean, it's just incredible. M A. Filipino cuisine. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. So you're M and A? Yes. Okay, introduce yourself. Well, I'm Monette. Okay, uh, Monette. Laird and, uh, oh, my name is Icy Munsell. Nice. Yes. But you go by M-A to yes. make it easier. Well, yes. M-A's or Ma's. Okay. A lot yeah. of people call it Ma's. Okay, yeah. I see. So um, you're going to prepare some authentic Filipino cuisine today, right? Yes, um, yes, okay. but I mean, this not so much on the taco yes, side. Okay. Yes, because <laughs> this is kind of like um, what we um, we twisted. Yes, yes. okay, it's, yeah. yeah, it's your spin on yes. it. it's your yeah. okay, it's your spin on that recipe. So, 
as far as Filipino food goes, um, is it hot? Do people think that it's real spicy? No. Um, okay. This one can be hot. Okay, with but the peppers. Did, yeah. We did not bring the chili oil and stuff. Okay. But it could be uh, spicy or not spicy. Got it. And it's just a different, I mean, customer preference. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. To taste. You can yes. load it up if they need it. Mm -hmm. The yes. peppers, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start on this side, and you're going to tell us what we have here today? Yes, yeah, so um, we brought a pre-boiled uh, pork belly. Okay. So this is a pork belly. has skin, fat, meat. And then we also have some of our ingredients here, some mm -hmm. of our garnish. Garnish. So we have the Sprite. This is Sprite? Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> yes, because we're making a candied pork belly. Oh. So it is sweet yeah. candied pork. So that. we have the barbecue sauce. This is already a Filipino barbecue sauce. Okay. So it's already a pre-made. It's a pre-made since it's going to be a secret recipe. Uh -huh. We okay. cannot share it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes. Also, we added our Filipino ketchup. It's banana sauce. Oh. So our ketchup is made of banana. Wow. And we also have, of course, you cannot, you know, make it sweet without the brown sugar. Okay. And then we garnish it with the green onions. Okay. Now, we're, we're aiming towards this. This this is going to look like this. You said you went ahead and boiled this because it takes some time to do that. Yes. It takes like an hour to, okay. to boil to make, to, to achieve the tenderness of the pork belly. Got it. Okay. Yeah, to make it the candid. All right. Well, let's get right in. I don't want to slow down progress. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We'll, so what we're going to do first is um, this barbecue sauce, uh -huh. we're going to put it in here. Perfect. So we actually kind of like marinated it. Okay. So. You like to keep the pork pieces bigger, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. But sometimes we can make it smaller. Okay. Depends on. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix it. Nice. Yeah. So, so when people come to your place, are they a little intimidated? Do they know what to order? Do they ask you? We yeah. explain. We explain them how. I mean, what the the dish, okay. and also we have a free taste yeah. oh. test. Okay. So in everything what we have in front, we give sample. In that way, you have. You have, you know, you know what to order sure. and you know exactly, you're not going to regret it and said, oh, you know, I'm going to go home. And then I was like, I don't like that dish. Right. So everyone that will order that makes sure that they will like that. Nice. You know, not everyone knows what Filipino food is. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, to introduce the food, uh, the only way is to taste the food right. before they buy it. So that they don't spend the money and they will end up not liking the right. food. So. Right. So what I did is the marinated pork that we, you know, we put uh -huh. the sauce. I put it in here and then I will um, kind of stir it. Okay. And then I'm going to add the Sprite. All right. And now, you're not going to give away what's in this either? You're not going to tell me what's in the sauce? <laughs> no. <laughs> She's like, no. no, no. So, um, but I'm going to add that more here okay. if it's not enough sweetness. The Sprite. I can't believe. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's the first time I've heard of this. Sprite is make it more tender. Also. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's and like a tenderizer. So, what we do huh. is put the sugar and then um, add more of the sauce. Okay. I mean, it's, it has to be like thickened okay. like this. So. Okay. The sauce will soak it to the. So meat. we're gonna need to spend a little time on that. Yes. So we're gonna move over to the uh, next yeah. one. What do we have over there? Because that's so. That this is too. a sisig taco. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, actually, we also boiled just like this. Uh -huh. We also yeah. boiled it, and then we deep fried it. Oh. So this is the deep fried pork belly. Okay. So what we do is we chop this in a small. That looks reminiscent of like pork rinds that you can yes, buy Yes, it is. Okay. Yes. It's a so, pork rind. Basically, it's like a chicharron. Okay. Got yes. Same thing, right? Yes. yes. Nice. And um, so, yeah. So that's what we do. And then we just chop it very small. So there some. Because that's going to go on the equivalent of a taco. Yes. yes. Okay. So, yeah, you have to chop it really fine. Are you guys pretty picky about your ingredients? You want to make sure things are fresh? Yeah. Yes. And so, we make sure also that we have the right ingredients and because quality is, got it. you know. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we always use the Philippine brand. Yes. So, that's, so you get to go over there and pick it up and bring it back? Or how does that work? No, no we, go, we to go to Chicago. Or, there is, <laughs> okay. there is or like sometimes a, when we run out, we go to international yes. store. Got in it. Garden, okay. So, yeah. yeah. 
so, so that's this, how it is. So okay. we tap it small. So what do you think is your, are these your top sellers of what people get at your place? Or? Yes, it's actually started uh, as specials. Okay. And then um, customers just keep asking, why can't you just right. have it? Like, you know, so we don't do it every day, but we do it every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. Yeah, so we, just, have, we pick certain yeah. days that we will do it. Yeah. Yeah, because we have a lot. We change around also on our uh, specials. Yeah. We have weekend specials, so in that way, people like something to look forward. Mm -hmm. You know, there you're not gonna get tired. But we also have our daily menus, regular menus. And then on the weekends, we have different uh, specials okay. for our weekend. Okay. So I I heat up the the taco shell. Okay. And what I do is I put this here. Nice. It's supposed to be sizzling because it's supposed to be really hot, but okay. yeah. So I just didn't wait until because okay, so that it, it won't be smoky. And then what I do is um, put this is our uh, soy sauce. Oh, okay. yeah. And I'm just gonna drizzle it. Now it's. Well, can I try one of these? Are they? Is this just? Oh yeah. For look. Yes, yes okay. absolutely. Good. I mean, I I don't want to be rude or anything, <laughs> but I might as well, right? So also our sisig, um, it's not because of the, it's not just because of the pork. Right. It's also because of our um, famous homemade sauce. You got so a lot of famous like a, sauces there. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> a lot of people want to buy it, but we don't sell it. Okay. Because, you know, they don't know how to store it properly. So it's look like mm. it's already steamy hot. Is it candied? Very good. <laughs> you know what you're doing. <laughs> And then usually if it's spicy, we put the chili oil first, mm -hmm. but because I'm not doing the spicy, so what I'm going to do is just put the meat. Oh, yum. And I'm going to put the sauce, just drizzle it here. And then, and then I'm going to put the onion. And then the tomato. We chop it very fine. Nice. So, so. All right, ladies. What else do you want to tell people before we get out of here? Thank you. Just come see you? Yes. Um, if you guys are around Marion, Illinois, mm -hmm. um, come and see us. We're open from Tuesday until Saturday. And also, uh, a lot of people are afraid to go there because they don't know the food. Right. Please don't be afraid. Don't be we, afraid. <laughs> we yeah. give samples for free, and you don't. If you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. Very you know? nice. I love that. We won't get mad, you know, because not everybody is the same taste. You well, know. Thank you, ladies. So, it's wonderful. Yeah. Thank Job you. well yeah. done. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. All right, we'll be right back. All right. Hi, my name is Marlena Gentry, and I'm a nursing student at Johnny Logan. I feel like it's more like a family. We really connect the students. We study together, we laugh together, we cry together, we get on each other. And then the teachers as well, they're just really easy to talk to, just helping you to grow. They want to give you everything you need to make it. John A is good at just making sure that your needs are met, that they're giving you what you need to succeed. And they have so many different programs to help you do that. So, all right, here you go, go ahead. Riley, eat the eggs. How'd you do? Not bad. All right. Good job. Not bad. Excellent. What's worth Could the whole a show bit more, today? A little bit more pepper, but. A little more pepper. Okay. Yeah. Well, here you go. Oh. All right. Any other tips from the kitchen you'd like to offer up? Look up YouTube videos on how to cook. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Or you could just follow this tutorial on YouTube. That's right. Follow this tutorial on YouTube. I love that. All right. We'll be yeah. right back. Marion Medical Mission's purpose is to share the love of Christ with the extreme poor in Africa. We do this through the Well Program by providing a sustainable source of safe drinking water while working hand in hand with our African partners. No overhead or administrative costs are deducted unless so designated by the donor. Be part of the solution. Go to mmmwater.org to donate. Okay, we've been hearing about it the whole show, so we've got to take care of some business first. Um, fortunately, our own Riley now feels confident in making eggs, right? 
And I mean, he was a little messy, a little sloppy, but you know, he, he cleaned up after himself. So we're very proud of him. We now feel like our 24 year old Riley will be just a fine. Grown man. But then we have Walker on the camera and he's like, ah, I can do a one handed crack, right? So we just happen to have one egg. One egg left. Walker, do you do you accept this responsibility? Absolutely. Of cracking the egg. This is taking me back to my restaurant days. Oh, okay. All right. So all you want to do is you get a nice flat surface. Riley, are you watching? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to give it one good smack, and then you act like you're snapping. Stop. Nice. That's the finger action right there. I like that. Excellent. That's a solid egg. Any shell? No. Okay. You want to you check? I think it looks great. Yes, I take your word for it. Thank you. You can take it. I don't think we need it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you. Oh yeah, no. if you want some thank protein you this very morning. much for the egg. Yeah, there you go. So I know you ladies are not feeling great. Um, you know, what, three hours sleep, I understand. A little bit of sleep. So what people don't realize is when we're not on the show, we actually go out. We have assignments. We do things. We meet people. And we're just back from Kentucky only to send you guys to Missouri. What's it like in Missouri? It's a lot of cows. A lot of cows. Lot of Hashtag cows. cows. Much mm -hmm. like Kentucky, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Google Maps took us to a, you got a cow lost. field. You got lost. I didn't will you? say I did redeem myself because I found our way once. So they found and then, their yeah, way. One and then time. you typed it in yeah. wrong like, one time and I typed well, it in wrong. Because see, we both she so, got us lost. And then lost. it became a competition. Listen, she got us lost once and I got us lost twice, but then I found us once. So we're even. Like Rob, what did we learn from this? <laughs> and I still, you need to go. I still, <laughs> do not let them navigate. I still have to, yeah, I still have to redeem myself for that. Yeah. And we're we, tied. We this. There Are is we no, tied? There is no redemption. I don't needed. like to yeah. be tied. Yeah. <laughs> I have to be yes. you. Yes. You see, they've spent a lot of time in the car together. You can tell. They're just still oblivious to anybody else being here. I really thought you'd have more stories from the hills and hollers of Missouri. They stood in three states at one time. We did. We did. All right. we Talk did. about that. That's big. Yeah. Where is that? It was, what, six miles from our yeah. stop from, in Joplin? Yeah, Joplin. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was the first time Ashley been to Oklahoma or Kansas. Or Kansas. Nice. Yep. Now I can say that. Mm -hmm. In one place. All at once, right? <laughs> I learned mm -hmm. a lot about portable buildings. Mm -hmm. so. Portable buildings. Okay, mm -hmm. that sounds exciting. And you were an Maybe. actress in one of those commercials, and you got a splinter. Yeah, we, we attempted huh? to get on it's the gonna ladder. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. Yeah. No, the ladder was <laughs> like sketchy. I, I was like, mm, <laughs> uh, yeah, we got to abort this mission real quick yeah, with that ladder. Yeah. But anything for the shot. Yep. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised we didn't get kicked out of a Mexican restaurant. I don't think we yeah, did anything. Yeah, we laugh. were laughing. We got the happy giggles. I don't even remember what we were talking about. We were just laughed the entire time. Yeah, I was crying. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, this is going to make you laugh. Okay, hopefully. You know I love these videos. I'm sorry. And I just had to have somebody to play off mm -hmm. of here because these guys never laugh, mm -hmm. okay? So have you guys seen... <laughs> it's the TikTok of the dogs. It's like what you think you look like sleeping and what mm -hmm. you actually look like. Have you seen it? Nope. Okay, it's super cute. That's what, mm. that's what you think you oh. look like sleeping. And now what's... <laughs> <laughs> what you actually look like sleeping. That's... <laughs> All right. <laughs> look, that's what we're about here. Just bringing you laughter and joy and travel tips and learn how to make eggs. And what else, Rob? Can we go? There's been a plethora of splinters in this episode. Plethora yeah. of splinters. I'm, I'm pretty convinced that mine is a glass shard. I just... Yeah. I... I think yours is But Emily, glass. you think it's what? Infected I it, and I think it might be glass. Oh, it's glass. Great. But yeah. <laughs> Emily has a great way to get glass out of your finger. It's just bacon fat. You just like band-aid bacon fat. So bacon mm -hmm. fat on the shard of whatever mm -hmm. and a band-aid. Rob says that that will give me That's some a sort recipe of for an You know what? That's My grandma told thing. me to do it and it worked. It so, works. grandma's okay. no best. Yep. All right. So stay tuned, and hopefully this finger will be good to go or just gone, like the next show, right? Either way, it's not a problem anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs>
Your plug in. <laughs> Listen, we want everything to be thick, rich, and bold. No, I, I'm with that. I'm with that. I pass. <laughs> mm. I'm with that. Why'd you take so long? What's up with that? Takes a long what? I don't know. Interview with the heart. <laughs>